don't say that I want to beat Auto, Autodesk, but I always consider them to be our biggest challenge. Our biggest challenge. As we all know, Tom Rosendale has been a vocal advocate for open source software and has expressed his opinions on Autodesk in various interviews and public forums. About Autodesk? <laughs> Whenever Tom criticized Autodesk, whether it is related to the world of 3D in general or to Blender specifically, somehow it sounds like they are having a never-ending boxing match. Tom is not outspoken about Autodesk just because he hates them for no reason, but rather because there are some rumors Autodesk employees are allegedly spreading about Blender and the fact that Autodesk kept the FBX format a very hard thing to understand and to integrate with other software in addition to their policies and other stuff. So let's jump right in and unpack everything. First of all, Tom was down many times, brought up the FBX format controversy, and he despises what he describes as Autodesk strategy, which was based on revising and revamping every single year as a little treat for anyone who tries to reverse engineer it for their in-house projects. He actually said in an interview that it is a part of the plan of Autodesk to keep things obscure, which he considered part of their master plan. The strategy, yeah, <sighs> they simply obscure things and they make things to make sure that everybody who has their own FBX thing for writer, reader, every year we ha you have to update things and uh, fix it. Oh no. Rosendale has always been an advocate for open standards in the 3D industry. He has argued that proprietary file formats and software lockings are harmful to the industry and limit collaboration and innovation, which I have to agree with because he has a point. He strongly criticized Autodesk licenses, which required some years ago users to either install a separate plugin through their website or make those 3D software such as Blender give them the information of every user who downloaded it if it is on their website. They can visit you at home if you use Autodesk <laughs> and check your computer was on it. With no doubt, Autodesk struggled to defend its decision, including the FBX technical updates and improvements, which Rosendale believes is intentionally overcomplicated. But for some reason, they had to change their old habits by making the FBX format free. But before this change happened, Rosendale was speaking about this for many years. He actually called Autodesk out years ago in a tweet saying, Dear CDOs, Autodesk uses FBX to keep the industry in a deadly embrace. How much longer do you tolerate this? Switch to GLTF tomorrow. As a company that made over $4.3 billion in 2022, which was a significant increase from the $3.7 billion they made in 2021, you know that Autodesk is doing something right. And well, they are. Their money is made by putting most of their focus on industries that need computer-aided design and visualization. And these industries include architecture, engineering, and manufacturing companies that make planes, cars, and everything else that is made in a factory that you can see around you. Basically, anything that requires very precise and technical visualization is where Autodesk makes most of their money. The media and entertainment department of Autodesk, that includes software such as Maya and Max and so on, which are marketed towards the game development and the VFX industry, make only 10% of the company's income at their best. So naturally, it means that the company's focus will pivot towards endeavors that are deemed more profitable, especially knowing that Autodesk is a public company that has investors, shareholders, and so on. Now, that doesn't take away from the efforts that Autodesk puts into the media and entertainment software. This just highlights that Autodesk prioritizes profitable business models over the user experience, broadly speaking. And as we establish with the FBX format, Autodesk does everything in their power to maintain their dominance over the 3D world, which makes a lot of sense from a business standpoint. Autodesk has to keep the software expensive, and it comes at the cost of alienating new potential clients especially the independent creators such as freelancers, also small studios. Toro Zindel actually criticized their business practices. He pointed out that their pricing model was too expensive and limited access to 3D creation tools for many people. Autodesk argues, since the beginning of Blender to this day, that their products are worth the price and provided superior functionality compared to other open source alternatives. 
But before we move on with the video, allow me to briefly talk about Milanode, today's video sponsor. Milanode can be used to organize all of your ideas for creative projects in just one place. So it is basically like an advanced sticky note on the web. For example, if I want to create a render that looks like a narrow and dark street or in a traditional Chinese and Japanese styles, Milanote makes it easy for me to gather notes, images, videos, tasks and more in a single place. This enabled me to quickly organize all of my ideas in one place by gathering images from the mood board in addition to references and arranging everything by dragging and dropping pictures and texts. It was also helpful when I worked on a design idea because I was able to quickly create a mind map by dragging and dropping various elements onto my board. Another feature I adore about this platform is the ability to add things like a web clipper, which allows you to rapidly save links, images and videos and play them directly within the platform. Milanote also offers a convenient feature where you can quickly initiate a new project using over a hundred pre-built templates in addition to many other features that you can find useful. So if you want to take a look at Milanote, you will find the necessary links in the description down below. Most of the tools, eh, from Maya to 3D Max to Arnold to uh, Flame, remember it, they all bought. They didn't make it. They buy them. Hmm. And then they stamp it with Autodesk. And that's how they can create an infrastructure where everything is happy and beautiful and everything works together, but not if you use one of the competitor yeah. tools. Another thing that seemed to annoy Todd Rosendell about the business model of Autodesk is the fact that they buy everything. So as you can see, Autodesk has interesting footwork, going around competitor technologies and simply buying them then stamping the Autodesk logo on top. Just to be fair, this is a common practice among giant companies. Two birds with one stone, getting rid of the competition and treating itself to shiny new code without having to pay the cost of development like it did with Arnold and Solid Angle, for example. Now, acquiring software isn't inherently a bad thing, as there are many stories of currently popular programs that had their origin start as an independent project that was purchased and further developed by other companies. But this speaks to us yet again. The corporate policies, which were discussed earlier, bring us to our final point. And boy, it may get personal for a lot of you guys. Tom Rosendell said in the interview with the Blender Guru that he heard rumors about Autodesk's sales representatives allegedly spreading misinformation about Blender. And is the content ours? If we use Blender, is it really ours? Because we got free software, maybe your content is then yours. I said, no. <laughs> I do hear rumors that Autodesk is spreading that story. What? Yeah. <gasps> yeah Autodesk That's sales a people, conspiracy they talk. go to companies and say, ah, I don't use Blender, but you know, open source. Uh, they, the content you make is, has to be open too, so you have to share it or everything. They spread those rumors. So shame on you. This may or may not be true, but conspiracy theories aside, Blender is indeed licensed under the GNU, which means in the most basic of terms that you can do with Blender as you wish. You can even modify its code as long as you keep any modification to the code free as well. But in terms of artworks and assets that you create with it, these belong to you and you only, which is the biggest advantage of open source programs. You can both contribute to improving and fully own whatever you create with it, especially the fact that the Blender community is very active and supportive. Rosendell has opinions about Autodesk, which is not new, and I'm not surprised because he had to deal with corporate people when he bought Blender back in the early days. But it is also important to note that the Autodesk package and Blender are marketed towards completely different demographics, which means they both have completely different business policies. Autodesk is made for and caters towards industry professionals, firms, and studios. And although Blender has been seeing quite the boom with professional productions and studios, it is by all intents and purposes produced by the people and for the people. It is basically a community-funded project which is only growing and evolving with its community, which goes to show that there is more than one road to success. 
and not all of them involve questionable corporate tactics. Overall, Tom Rosendell's perspective on Autodesk is shaped by his belief in the power of open source software and his focus on creativity and collaboration in the 3D creation, which allows him to step up his game and in the future, he might end up with a competition directly with Autodesk, which is now the major company when it comes to software used by professionals in the entertainment industry and other industries such as engineering, architecture, and so on, which are the fields that are now using Blender. So to say that Ton and Autodesk have beef would be an understatement, but to operate under fundamentally different philosophies shouldn't necessarily mean conflict, because disagreements are most certainly inevitable. I hope you guys found this video useful, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, you can also subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this, thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.